Hello everyone and welcome back to Wellies and Waffles. My name's Karen. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I haven't been on here for a while because it's been over winter and there's not been much going on in the garden but uh, I hope you're all staying safe and well in these unusual times. Uh, so I thought to start off this year by going through some of the seeds that have started to arrive. Um, I know I did a bit of a teaser on Instagram when I got the delivery of seeds and everybody's been asking me what's actually in the packet so I thought I'd go through them and show you what's what's arrived so far so let's take a look. So I've got um, probably about three or four days, I'm windswept and interesting this morning <laughs> I'm like a lion, a <laughs> big lion's mane. Um, the, uh, I've got a few companies sending me seeds but probably about three or four different, different companies and um, one of them is a specialist tomato company and I've got all sorts of weird and wonderful tomatoes coming so I can't wait to show you those but uh, these seeds today are all from Premier Seeds Direct and I've ordered from them before and they've always been really good so um, we'll start off with tomatoes with this one I've got three different kinds from this company obviously uh, as, as everybody knows me I can't go without these Sun Gold tomatoes these are my favourite ones uh, they've never let me down. You don't get so many in a packet, you only get about 10 in a packet, whereas normally you sort of get between you know, 100, 100 or so in, in certain packets, but you never get so many of the Sun Gold. I think it's because of that special, they don't, uh, they don't give you so many of them. Uh, but they're a little cherry tomato, bright orange, really sweet, full of flavour. Um, they've got a really long growing season as well, so you start starting picking from you know, early summer time to, to late on. They're um, yeah, really prolific. And like I said, never let me down actually with those, and I've, I've always got the most tomatoes out of the Sun Gold ones. So I will definitely be go growing those again. One of the things with the Sun Gold is that it is an F1 variety, which means that you, you can't really save the seeds from them year after year. So you will have to buy new seeds. I mean, you could, you could, you could try and save them and, and grow them, but you won't get a true plant out of it, so you won't get a true tomato out of it, you won't get a Sun Gold if it did actually come to anything. So always buy new seeds when it comes to F1 varieties. The next one is a green zebra. And I've heard really good things about this tomato. It's some people's favorite one to grow. This is a bit of a larger one, more of a medium sized tomato. Bright green and then it's got green stripes on it as obviously the name suggests with a zebra. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to those. I think you could sow those up until 2023 as well, which is good, so it gives you a few years. And then I've got a really strange one here, and I couldn't resist it. Um, you know me with different varieties, I always like to try something a bit different. Um, this is called Garden Peach, and it's a medium-sized tomato again, but it's got, as again, like the name suggests, it's got um, a peach kind of a skin to it, so it's a little bit furry which is strange with the, with the tomato, so that'd be interesting in some salads, having a nice furry tomato in there, so we'll see how that one goes. So let's have a look next at the Calabrese section. Now, I've mentioned on Instagram before that I've, I've spotted something that I really want to try, something uh, slightly different with it, and this one is called Broccoletto Quarantino Riccio. Now, I didn't even realise the quarantine name, but it's quite apt, really, at this, at this moment, isn't it, to have something called Quarantino. So we'll give those a go. There's lots of, uh, lots of different seeds in there. So this one is, it's not a full head like a, a normal broccoli, a large green broccoli. These are green, again, but the more like your purple sprouting broccoli, so you get your little side shoots of them, your little florets in them. They're a really quick um, grower, these, that... Uh, from seed to harvest you can get sort of 45 days, so quite a quick growing one. A little bit sharper in taste than a normal broccoli. Um, but yeah, that should be quite interesting to grow. Three grams of those, plenty of those in there to give a, to give a go. So that'd be uh, quite interesting. If uh, And also if you've got, if you struggle sometimes to to get a broccoli to actually, you know, get the, the large heads of the broccoli, it might be good to, to try the little florette ones as well. Um, obviously, always got the purple early sprouting broccoli as well. That's a staple in my garden. So we always like to try those. They've never, uh, again, never let me down with those. And get absolutely tons in them. How many do you get in here? 3,000. 
I mean, you can never have, never have enough broccoli, can you? Why did they put 3,000 in there? I mean, we're just trying to get rid of them, I think, aren't we? <laughs> but it always seems to be with broccoli and cauliflowers and things like that. You always get thousands of them. So, I mean, broccoli, cauliflower's a little bit harder work, I find, but uh, not to get to seedling stage. I always find that's okay to get to seedling stage. It's just actually trying to get the heads on them at the end. So let's talk about squash. So last year I uh, did the Yuchiki Curie and the Pink Banana Squash, which was absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to grow the Pink Banana Squash again. Obviously in the polytunnel it does need heat, so I'll be trying them in there. Um, I will be trying the Yuchiki, I can never pronounce it, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right, Yuchiki Curie. Oh, oh, cheeky curry, you cheeky curry, something like that. Anyway, you know what I mean, red curry squash. Um, so I'm going to try these again. I did try them outside, but they didn't they didn't do as well really outside for me. So I think I'm going to try them inside. I'm in the north of England, so it's a little bit cooler. Um, so yeah, we'll do these in the polytunnel again. Again, the pink banana squash was really good. What I'm going to try and do is separate them out a little bit more. I think this time I did do them sort of two two three foot apart but what I noticed was the pink banana squash that was growing further away because I'd ventured off sort of ten foot down the down the polytunnel that one seemed to have grown differently than the one that were growing next to the U cheeky curie so I think um, they might have intermingled a little bit flavour absolutely amazing as well and what I've done with those is well I've still got one left but one of the um, pink banana squashes I mean it was it was like a canoe you could canoe in it it was massive um, I put that in the oven roasted it with some butter and then I've roasted some um, uh, what did I roast it pumpkin seeds with cumin and roasted those as well and put them on top with some feta cheese and then I did a, a um, like a sweet and sour sauce made with red wine vinegar honey blueberries, cherries and cranberries and mix it all up and then poured that on top and it was, oh, it was absolutely amazing. The feta crumbled on top. So I've still got one of those left. So I might actually do the same with that because I've done some, some soups and things like that. So yeah, so I'm going to do the red curry again. Um, and I'm going to start, I'm going to do the loofers because I know there's a few people doing the um, grow along this year. So I'm going to try the loofers which are really interesting to me. The, um, obviously to try and get the sponges, to make the sponges and some people have been putting them inside soaps and making soaps with them so that's quite an interesting one to grow this year. Um, a Delicata Honeybolt, that is um, a long squash, again yellow with green stripes on it, it's supposed to be a really good flavour to those, again a couple of years on, on those as well. And the Squash Summer Zephyr, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, looks more like a courgette kind of thing, so a smaller variety. I think I'll probably try these outside as well. Um, in fact, I think I will. Do, yeah, I'll do these outside with the courgettes. These are a two-tone, um, I keep calling them courgettes, don't I? But they really are, so squash. <laughs> um, two-tone, so the yellow and then they suddenly change green and they look really um, interesting. So that'll be another one. And they've also got a really good flavour as well, quite nutty in flavour, nice and crisp it says so that'd be good let's have a look at melon oh, let's talk about melons <laughs> um, I keep trying watermelon in my polytunnel it is warm enough because it gets to 60 odd degrees so that's not the issue I think what the issue is is that I'm just not watering it enough and I think the clues in the name really watermelon so I do need to water it a lot I have gone for a smaller variety um, which is the uh, sugar baby in thinking that if I can just get it to because they're only a small watermelon so I think if I can just get it to that and then I can harvest it rather than trying to get a huge thing but it still didn't work because something ate it last year um, but I did try the other side of it and it was really really good so I'm going to try it again I'm going to, just going to keep water I'm just going to stand there and just water <laughs> so if I vanish I'm out in there watering um, so I'm going to try this year, Melon Amia. Uh, this is an F1 variety again, 30 seeds in there, a couple of years to grow those. Um, 
yeah, really, I've heard really good things about these as well. So that's obviously what's pointing me in the direction to get these. So let's have a look at radish. So the radish that I grow is the, I tend to do the French breakfast radish, which is a long radish. It's red and then uh, white at the bottom. Um, mixed results on radish. Sometimes it grows really well and then sometimes it just grows leaves, even though it's in the same uh, soil. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to keep trying with those because they are really good, really good raw and really good roasted as well. I like to roast them with uh, a bit of butter and some salt on top. Uh, so this time I'm going to try some different ones as well as, which is the watermelon again, my nemesis, red meat. So maybe a, a bit strange with me being a vegetarian and going, mm, red meat, yeah, I'll, have, I'll give that a go. But uh, they're really interesting, 600 in there, really interesting. The white on the outside and pink in the middle, as if to suggest meat. So we'll, we'll try that. And these, those are a round variety, as well as these ones. Malaga purple, which is a round... Sorry about my fingers. That they're, I've been digging away in soil and uh, dry as anything. Doesn't it dry your hands out? Really, really dry. I mean, I could dry as a cream cracker. I could exfoliate just using my, my fingers, I think, at the moment. I'm going to have to lather myself up in moisturiser. Anyway, Malaga Purple. Yeah, so these are a bright purple one, and, uh, yeah, they'll be interesting to grow as well. Really good in salads, won't it? If, uh, nice bright colours in there as well. Brussels sprouts. These are Red Bull. Don't know whether it gives you wings, but we can give it a go, can't we? These are a red, red purple variety. Um... 450 again in there. I mean, you know, they really want you to have Brussels sprouts, don't they? They didn't, they worked for me previously. I haven't tried this variety before, but I have tried a green variety, but I can't remember its name, but that was a few, couple of years ago. Uh, they did really well. Also, the Brussels sprout tops as well. Don't forget to, to eat those because they're a delicacy. Um, so, really good, those ones. Um, last year, I grew, well, I tried to grow up Brussels sprouts and the slugs ate all the uh, the seedlings so I didn't get any this year and I had to go and buy some which was painful putting Brussels sprouts and old veg really when you have to put that into your trolley and you think oh but uh, no so I'm going to try these ones this year the red ones this one's uh, the red bull are supposed to be one of the, be the best of the red varieties to try and grow so um, hopefully they'll be all right there will be a smaller Brussels sprouts, so don't worry if you are growing these and that you think, oh, they're, they're quite small. They are a smaller one than the green varieties anyway, so we'll give those a go. I'm not right keen on them cooked. Um, I've had them on a pizza before with a bit of balsamic dressing on, and that was okay. Um, but what I do with my Brussels sprouts is I slice them up raw and have them in a coleslaw. I make a Brussels sprout and carrot coleslaw uh, with a little bit of mayonnaise and some white wine vinegar and a bit of honey in there as well, and it's absolutely beautiful. Don't, don't go overboard with the mayonnaise, just a tiny bit of mayonnaise in it, and mix it up, it's absolutely fantastic. So try that one. Uh, and let's have a look at sweet corn. So I've, um, last year I tried the strawberry popping corn, which is a smaller corn, ready for drying. Uh, once you've harvested it, dry it, and then you can uh, put it in the microwave and cook it, and obviously make it into popcorn, which we were going to do for having with films and things, but it didn't actually quite work out that way. They didn't grow, grow properly for me this year. I've had really good, um, uh, you know, really good experience, really. We're growing sweet corn some years, but last year just didn't. I don't know whether it's because what had happened, they, they dropped on the floor and they'd all mixed up. Because what you want to do with sweet corn is if you're growing a few varieties, grow them as far away as you possibly can from each other, because otherwise they'll cross-pollinate, um, they don't like that. They, you know, if you've got a sweet, sweet corn, um, it won't be as sweet. They might not pollinate um, properly, so you do you won't get a, a true, true sweet corn for for what you've actually, for what you want, what you've ordered. So do it as far away as possible. I think mine, as far away as I can possibly grow in the plot, is probably about seven foot away from each other. Really, I prefer to do it a little bit further. But when you are growing a single variety, when you're actually planting the varieties, grow them as close as you possibly can to one another because then the wind, that's me, uh, <laughs> that's me sweet corn, <laughs> the wind will, will help pollinate one another. I do hand pollinate them as well just to give them, you know, an extra 
opportunity to try and pollinate. So I do hand pollinate and we'll be talking about that um, further down the line when we get to that point. But it just helps them along just because obviously when you've been growing them for a few months you want to you really want to make sure that they're, they're going to actually harvest and you're going to get something out of them at the end so hand pollinate them as close as possible in blocks so don't just do one long line of them do them in blocks and yeah hopefully water them really well keep them going so this one that i'm trying this time as well is i'm going to do the strawberry popping but i'm also going to do this one rising sun I've not tried those ones before. I've tried the early bird, which was really good. It's supposed to be 10 times sweeter than a normal sweet corn. And it was really good. I mean, we were going out, me and the kids were going out and just picking them off and eating them. Really, really good raw. So this rising sun one, this is, uh, this is supposed to be a good one. Really, um, really good, strong, firm root system. So if you, if you are in a bit of a windy area or anything like that, this is a good one to have because it's quite a sturdy, sturdy plant. So, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll try those ones. And I've got a couple more left to show you. Um, we've got beetroot. So I'm trying the rainbow mix, which I think is about five different varieties in here. Previously, I've grown the Chiogia, which is a stripy pink and white beetroot. And I think this is, this is in here as well, which is good. And also a golden one is in here. Uh, which I've, I've wanted to grow the golden ones for a while, so that, that'd be nice to try out those. Um, yeah, the chogya, again, you know, roasted, put, you know, put in the oven, bit of salt, bit of uh, butter, roasted in there, really, really good. I've, not, I've never pickled them or anything like that, but I might do actually this time. I've got lots of vinegars and, and things, so I can uh, try pickle some. But yeah, we'll try these. Uh, yeah, a couple of years to grow on those. So, and the last one that I've got from this batch is carrots. So this one is dragon. I mean, I'm just lured by different names of things on <laughs> me, dragon. So this is a dark purple variety. Um, like I said in previous videos, I have done a, a rainbow mix ones, and I will be doing those again because I just find them so fascinating. And also, they taste great as well which is what, what you're after, you're not just after the look of the veg, or you want the, the taste of it as well. Um, so the rainbow mix ranges from, you get the cream, you get the golden yellow, and then you get the orange, normal orange carrot colour, then you get red and purple as well. I've done a taste test with them all, and they are all sweet. They, I think you'd only notice the difference if you were tasting them side by side, because they are all sweet, and I would have them all um, again. But uh, yeah, there's just slight, you could just a slight bit of difference. I would have, I say that the darker ones, like the purple one, does have more of a savoury kind of thing rather than a sweetness. But they are sweet, but just not, I don't think, as much. The best ones, I think, of that range were the cream pack. Uh, so if you did want to try one that's slightly different than your yellow ones, have a look at the cream pack as well and throw that one in there because they're really nice. Like I said, nice cream. Um, uh, carrot, cucumber, carrot. Um, so yeah, give those goes, and they're really good for kids as well. So because they never know what colour they're going to pick out. I've mentioned in a, another video before about sowing carrots in containers. If you haven't got space outside, I like to do my grow mine in containers anyway because I can control what the soil is like. Um, because if I tried to grow, I've tried them when I started this about six, seven years ago. Um, I tried growing them in the ground and the ground was just too rocky so I was getting all sorts of weird and wonderful shirts which is good because it's really interesting uh, I get legs and all sorts coming off them so uh, but they didn't grow as well as what they should do so I can control the, the compost and what's actually going in in the tub so I do a large tub put it with uh, nice fine compost sand as well put sand in there because you want it as fine as possible and then they can just grow down there's no nothing in the way um, but yeah, kids love it because they never know what colour they're going to pick out and uh, yeah, it keeps it interesting for them as well. So yeah, give those a go and uh, yeah, let me know how you get on with those. So I think that's it for this haul. So I'm just waiting for the postman to drop a few more through the letterbox and uh, yeah, I can show you what, what else I've got on there because I've got some really, really exciting varieties coming through this year so I can't wait. Um, I know a few people just um, you know steer away really from growing anything that they've never grown before uh, because they, they like to stick to the staples. Well I, I, I have my staples but I also like to try weird and wonderful ones as well because you never know they might be your favourites so you might find a favourite one in there, there as well. 
Um, so obviously, do, have a look at them. Have a look. Obviously, the name jumps out at me all the time anyway, but I do read down to see if they're, if they're nice as well, because obviously if you, if you don't like acidic tomatoes, you're not going to be want to buy them just because of the look of them, or you do want to enjoy them as well at the end of it. So give, um, yeah, give new varieties a go. And it also just adds a bit more interest to it if you're growing something different. And uh, yeah, let's see, see how far you go. I'm trying to, I'm gonna, I'm really trying to push it this time. I know I try and push my boundaries of things. I try and grow up here as well. But I have got something arriving that is good to be going in the polytunnel. Um, never tried before, but I, yeah, it's, it's gonna be pushing the boundaries of whether it's actually gonna grow uh, up here. But I, can't, I, can't, I just can't wait to show you. So thank you for listening. And uh, if you've got any comments, please uh, pop them below. I love, I love talking to you all. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like. And uh, she'll talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.